Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan with One Big Impact. So today's video is kind of a situation that has a lot of pressure built up around it. It's uh, low carb diets or low carb lifestyles and constipation. <laughs> I tried to think of something like catchy in the beginning. I'm like, you know, would that be cool if we just did like, it's gonna be a messy situation or something. I was like, okay, nobody's getting, oh my gosh, I said it anyway. Okay, so now that we're moving on from all that business, um, <laughs> I have 15 things today that are going to help with low carb lifestyle constipation because it's a very real reality in this world. So the first thing is going to be if you're experiencing constipation and you're not eating vegetables, um, well, you should eat more vegetables. I promise you that's going to benefit you massively if you're not eating vegetables what the hell are you doing you're not doing low carb you're trying to kill yourself <laughs> seriously guys um, definitely eat more fiber through your vegetables i recommend that you get at least 18 to 20 grams of foundation vegetables uh, per day and i usually incorporate those in my meal in my, in my, blah, 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 in my meal plants <laughs> So definitely keep that in mind, and I promise you it is going to make the world of difference in your body. I recommend those better and more often than number two. Number two is actually a fiber supplement. Hold on, I'm going to show you. Okay, so these are actually the fiber supplement I use, and I'm not endorsing a company. It's not about that, and I'm not going to really like tell you necessarily the one I get, but I just get the knockoff fiber supplement. You actually, it's like, I think it's like three, four bucks. It's, you can compare it to Metamucil tablets or whatever, like the capsules. It's like 160 of these in a giant thing. You take like six at a time or whatever. Um, that seems to be work really well for me. Uh, the next thing is number three. So ketogenic or low carb or Atkins or any of that is actually usually very high in dairy and I'm actually lactose intolerant. So I got problems beyond that, but and, and especially high in cheese um, because everybody that's like the dessert or the nurture of the gods and stuff when you're on a low carb. So everybody goes usually really heavy, but it can cause extreme constipation. So that being said, if you're having a lot of constipation, try to back away from uh, so much cheese or dairy intake, especially if you have a sensitive stomach to that type of thing. So definitely keep that in mind. The number four thing that I wanted to talk about is get active. Um, that would be probably the most important thing besides uh, hydration. Um, get active. Seriously, if you have a sedentary job or um, your body's not moving around and stuff like that, guess what? Your body's not going to, it's like, it's like, driving a car and you know how you got all the fluids moving around and you got the oil and you got the gas going through the system and everything and then all of a sudden you park the car for a year and like your body once it's not moving around and when you start that back up it's not it, 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 the fluids aren't going to move around because you're not moving around just like the car uh, all those fluids can't circulate if the car is not moving just like your fluids aren't going to circulate if you're not moving so definitely keep that in mind get active do at least 30 to 60 minutes a day per day of every day of physical exercise now i'm not saying go to the gym six seven days a week I mean, if you want to, go ahead, that's that's cool. Um, but always remember to stay active doing something, at least um, like walking or something like that. Don't get too stressed out and go uh, too overwhelmed with the whole idea of physical exercise, especially if you're experiencing constipation, because then you're just gonna stress yourself out more. This is gonna get more intense. Um, you're gonna add to anxiety to that and everything. So definitely keep that in mind. The next thing, the next thing, like I just said, is to drink water um you need to be at least drinking uh, and i don't have my water here i can't seem to find my water i don't know where my water is but um usually i have it on hand that kind of makes me mad <laughs> um drink at least of the 16.9 ounces of water bottles you need to be drinking at least 8.78 or 9 bottles a day if you want to kick it up 
like Iris did, um, you know, drink 10 to 14. It's not going to hurt you. The more water you drink, uh, the the better off you're going to be. Your 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 bodies and your intestines and everything can get extremely dehydrated, and the fluid and everything can get excreted to other parts of your body, going out of your intestines, therefore actually causing a problem because you can't lubricate everything. And if everything's not lubricated, guess what? You're not going to have a bowel movement. So definitely keep that in mind. The next thing, number six, is add salt to your water. Now, I'm saying this if you experience uh, an issue for an extended period of time. If you do, you can use like a saline solution, add some water to your, uh, some salt, add some water to your salt. <laughs> add some salt to your water, you know, like a teaspoon or whatever, to a warm glass of water, drink that down. Start slow, be careful, um, because it can cause problems. You could potentially crap your pants I'm not, you know and it may or may not work for you everybody's body's different I have extremely good results sometimes with that so definitely keep that in mind and go slow um, do a little bit at a time uh, the next thing is step away from the laxatives laxatives are bad do not take laxatives a lot of women and especially women I think in their 30s to their 60s have gone on this whole bandwagon of laxatives and it's an extremely scary dependency. Not only are you not able to have a regular bowel movement once you build up that dependency, but then once you stop them, you're never basically going to go to the bathroom. You have to wean yourself off of them slowly and definitely stop taking them altogether. And I promise you eventually you will have a bowel movement and you're, you're, you will become regular again, but definitely stay away from those. On the other hand, if you're experiencing um, issues and you're not addicted to uh, laxatives or something like that, then definitely keep that in mind. You can use those or a stool softener, um, a suppository or whatever every once in a while, not every day. I'm talking specifically to some people I know <laughs> that have that problem, but, um, and I, I, I know, I have family members and lots of people around me that have had that issue and it's a very common thing. It's kind of one of those unspoken things. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing, number eight, is try an Epsom salt bath. Epsom salt is a really, really good home remedy for lots of things. You can use it for gardening, you can use it for sore muscles like DOMS, delayed on sore muscle soreness, uh, onset muscle soreness. You can take a bath in it or whatever, but it also works as a very light relaxing with a warm bath as a laxative and it'll actually help you pass a movement, uh, pass a bowel movement. So it's really nice. Number nine is actually a cool one to me because I like it on a ketogenic diet or a low carb regimen. And the reason I do is because it's already something you need to be incorporating into your meal plan. And if you're not using it, I think you should definitely start incorporating it immediately. Olive oil. A tablespoon of olive oil in the morning on an empty stomach actually works really good. Plus, it's really super healthy fat and you should be incorporating this into your daily regimen. If you're not following like my specific meal plans or something, you could arise with a lot of problems. Of course, you could get constipation, but I incorporate a lot of healthy fats and if you see that your body is not operating to its full potential as far as constipation or irregularity or um, being bloated all the time or whatever, you might benefit from, obviously, like I just said, the olive oil, but also uh, regularly adding in healthy fats like nuts and uh, avocados, as well as uh, olive oil and stuff like that. So keep those in mind. Uh, the next thing is a fresh lemon in your water. Squeeze, uh, squeeze one whole lemon into a uh, like a cup of water into warm water. It works really good. Uh, keep in mind, they do have carbs. I don't know exactly what the carb count is. I think it's like six or nine. Um, so you're definitely going to have to incorporate those. I don't recommend that you do it every day um, because of that factor, especially, I mean, if you're on a low carb regimen, if you're not and whatever, that's, that's fine. Then go ahead and do that. But definitely uh, try that. Um, 11, number 11, we'll, we'll actually name this number Brenda. Number Brenda is coffee. Coffee is a very good um, natural laxative. And I honestly, um, I would say I don't really have any problems passing bowel movements because I drink coffee in the morning. 
Um, and if you don't drink coffee, definitely try it. I'm not saying get addicted to coffee or go overboard or whatever, but try a cup of coffee and see if it helps you um, become more regular. Uh, the next thing is flaxseed. I noticed uh, well, a couple weeks ago um, I tried flaxseed seeds and I added them and I was trying some different things just to see you know if I could um, you know pass movement while I was doing some research on this because I actually uh, got an idea about this video a while ago and it actually was quite effective. Um, I, I definitely think that you should uh, maybe they have flaxseed oil, they have flaxseed seeds, they have lots of different things. So definitely try those and those are those have been an age-long memory for passing bowel movements. Number 13, something to avoid to be able to be more regular is painkillers. Uh, painkillers like Vicodin, Percocet, um, if you have back pain and stuff like that and you're taking a lot of those, definitely, and this is a touchy subject because I know, I understand that you're probably dealing with pain and it's, it's strange because you don't really, you want to be able to um, not live with pain, but you also are irregular and stuff like that. So that's definitely something that you should consult your physician about. Um, but I do know, um, avoid them as much as possible. And like usually if you're on them or whatever and you're not passing a bowel movement for like six days, usually if you skip a couple days, you'll pass a bowel movement because they literally just unlock you. Um, because I know after my, <coughs> surgery I had a problem with that a lot as well as when I had the injury and stuff so I definitely noticed a huge problem with that. Number 14 and there's lots of these tutorials on um, YouTube and stuff. One time I, I actually when I was on painkillers I could not pass a bowel movement um, and I know this is TMI but hey it's, it's this is life this is what we got to talk about this is what we're here it's not to be embarrassed about it's just our bodies. Um, if you massage your stomach in the direction of which your intestines travels and everything, and there's actually some pretty good tutorials, like really quick how-tos. Uh, you can also go to like WikiHow and they'll tell you how to massage it to get either gas or get a bowel movement moving around in the uh, direction of passing it. So it's actually really good and honestly, it helped. I tried it twice and it did it, even on painkillers. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, number 15 and the final one is try adding salt to your diet. Um, a low carb regimen usually um, they are definitely uh, very salt deprived. It's a natural diuretic. You're going to pee a lot so you get rid of like your, a lot of your uh, sodium levels and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. That could be really beneficial to add some salt. And you can do that a lot of the times by adding like a chicken broth or also just um, putting a little extra salt on your food when you're cooking and stuff. Don't ever, I know we all have this fat scared and sodium scared uh, society these days, but honestly, when you're on uh, a low carb regimen, you're perfectly fine to add plenty of salt. It's no big deal. Um, you're probably eating far less than you were uh, before you actually got on a healthier lifestyle change. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But Obviously, if, if none of this uh, helps you and you go a couple weeks and you can't pass a bowel movement and you feel like you're having some serious issues, you probably need to consult your primary care physician and, uh, or your local doctor or um, somebody other than me, a health professional. Um, I, I, I hope you guys like our video. If you guys did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Have a beautiful day and <laughs> happy movements. <laughs> no. Uh, if you guys are new here, please uh, check out our Facebook group called Healthy Living for a Healthy Life. And remember to be stronger than your excuses. Have a beautiful day and spread love, not hate. Peace.